In this lesson we will build a fireworks setup and uh, I don't think I have to do anything for you so basically we will just have an explosion in our scene so although this is uh, really more appropriate for a particle setups especially thinking particles I think it would be really beneficial to you to show you that this is actually possible with MoGraph also so now you possibly noticed that I really increased the pace for this uh, project lessons and uh, I'm creating a sphere with 50 segments for a start but uh, I want to explain you something before that. It is absolutely vital for you to understand everything we discussed in previous volumes otherwise this will be really difficult and uh, if you find that you're having troubles with following these setups because MoGraph demands all that previous knowledge to be utilized in its full glory otherwise um, the sheer potentials of uh, MoGraph won't be met. Also I really picked up the pace because I want to show you as many things as I can for your money and uh, let's without further delay proceed. The only thing that is uh, similar to fireworks in Cinema 4D by default is this uh, explosion fx deformer so i will put it as a child of my object and always experiment first with the things which are most obvious in mograph and also that works uh, for cina 4d in general is all about transferring your ideas via these available tools that are at your disposal so first think of the setup then try to work out in your head how you will recreate this setup with the available tools. So that's the recipe for good technical developing. Now I will play with some settings here under this uh, explosion FX. Uh, the first thing that uh, I will change is under this cluster. I will change this minimum and uh, maximum polys because I really want to use a minimum amount of uh, geometry that is uh, a golden rule so let's go with the lowest value and that is 2 I also will press play and uh, nothing will happen this will remain static so if I want something to explode I'll have to play with this time parameter as you can see and uh, what I will do I will find beginning of the explosion so let's find that value that is roughly 3.7% so I will add a keyframe at frame 0 and let's say that we will do a 90 frames animation and uh, I'll set this to some arbitrary value let's find something uh, maybe 20 let's see how that will work and uh, I'll add a keyframe I will also enable this Grad shading lines, we will be able to see that uh, debris in the viewport. So now we are having an explosion. Doesn't really look uh, promising at the moment, but we will fix that. Here under cluster, I will get rid of this thickness because I will not need it. Let's press play now and see what happens. Now I have really a sort of a uniform spherical explosion with some sort of uh, gravity going on which is set here I stop this it's a little bit distracting and uh, play with some settings now I'm pretty sure that you watched fireworks at some point in your life so notice that uh, with fireworks these guys actually disappear they extinguish with time so we will check this disappear guy and uh, Leave all these settings at default. Here under explosion, we'll add some variation just to get rid of this uh, uniformity. Let's say maybe like this. And uh, the blast speed should be much higher. Let's try maybe 500. See how that works. And uh, maybe not. Let's go back. Let's rather try to set this back to default and uh, have a go with this variation guys so let's set also this to 50 percent so some sort of uh, variation and this uh, 
looks really solid, so let's stop it and go back. Now, even though this uh, looks really promising, maybe I will have to do something that's uh, a little bit beyond the scope of this uh, tutorial. So let me explain. You would expect uh, some sort of a more violent effect at the start of the explosion and uh, it should happen more rapidly. We will do that by really calling a timeline because I don't want to disturb my original uh, layout. So let's maybe put it here. So I will enter the curve mode for my keyed values, so for my keyframe values, which are exactly these guys. So this is the spline through which that explosion will happen. Maybe I will just scale this a little bit so you will be able to see a little bit better. And uh, I'll press H inside this window and this will frame the spline into that available space. And uh, although this uh, wasn't meant to be an animation tutorial, I think you will really benefit from this. So let's hit play and uh, you can see these guys, this behavior is mapped through this spline and it's uh, sort of a, like a wavy spline. If I want something to happen a little bit more rapid, more violent, I will just select this guy and pull this tangent upwards. So maybe like this and you will see the effect be more violent at the beginning. I hope that makes sense and uh, that's as far as I will go with uh, this animation part and maybe I will just pull this just a little bit down so I don't have any overshoot here because these guys would maybe go back if that makes sense to you. So I will close this, stop it, go back and uh, Hopefully we'll see the difference. Now it happens a little bit more realistic. So it blasts outside and uh, that debris slowly slows down. I think uh, that is okay. Now here actually comes the fun part where we will use a MoGraph cloner. So let's select our sphere and uh, we will make it editable and uh, drop it under a cloner. And, uh, I'll zero this out and maybe spread them a thousand uh, centimeters across. So now, really see I have that flexibility because of the cloner. So that is uh, pretty much the reason for using it. Let me stop this, go back and uh, we'll show you something really interesting. With the cloner selected, I will load up a tracer and uh, if I hit play now, well, nothing will happen because this guy, this handle cloners has to be in another mode. So watch what happens if I hit immediate clones. And uh, you'll also notice one another problem and that is due to priorities. So this guy, this tracer should be lower than this cloner. So now things will start to happen as expected. And uh, this looks really nice, but uh, we can push this a little bit further. So first I will put some color just to make things a little bit more live and happy. So let's choose something, maybe this one. I think that's nice. And uh, hit play and see what we get. And that looks really cool. <laughs> Let me stop this, go back and I will hide this sphere because it's kind of in the way. I only want to have the trace. Let's now fiddle around with some settings here under object and uh, the first thing I want to change, I want to limit the explosion. So I want to limit the traces. So let's uh, do from end here and uh, try 10. That's uh, solid enough, but maybe we'll try with five. I think five will work for us. Let's stop, go back. Now I will deselect the tracer so you can see that in full glory and uh, 
how about that i think this is really really cool don't forget you can render the tracer with hair material and uh, maybe convert the tracer into a most spline and gain additional flexibility and uh, much much more we can even expand on this because that was uh, really requested by one of the testers for the video so this is a second version expanded and uh, for this second version the problem that uh, my tester had is uh, to add a trail to that uh, fireworks so basically once you fire the fireworks you have the rocket that uh, goes upwards and uh, leaves a trail and then the explosion happens so that was a bit problematic for him so i decided to put this into this newly recorded lesson so let's build that rocket trail and uh, often you will have to build things separately and then find a way to combine them now i will press play and I will hide all these guys just to have this uh, particle emitter visible and uh, I will change some settings first thing I will orient it properly so 90 degrees like this so it's pointing down maybe I will scale it to let's say 50% because I think that would be appropriate and here under the settings I will increase this to maybe 500 so i want to have a lot of these guys and uh, maybe even a thousand and uh, we'll decide let me just stop this it's really distracting me while i'm recording and i will have to decide on this uh, emission time so let's say 20 frames i'm really experienced and uh, can uh, guess with uh, really good precision and this lifetime should be the same and you will see why and the speed well this speed should be considerably higher so let's go with uh, 500 let me see how that works maybe even more let's try thousand and see how that works that that would be much better let me stop this go back and uh, i will enter 100 percent variation for all of these guys just to have a really random appearance I think this is really good let's go back and uh, just for the sake of a tutorial I will change the color to something uh, maybe this yellow will work let's try yes that would be really cool now it does look fine but uh, maybe we will add just a little bit of uh, turbulence and you can find the particle modifiers here so turbulence and uh, let's load it in the include change to include and uh, under turbulence let's play with this guy maybe 50 maybe even more let's go with 100 so you can see the difference and uh, you see how those guys are spread out a little bit more so that was the effect i was uh, aiming for so that's really nice let's go back and that's it for the rocket or exhaust part or whatever you want to call it and uh, now the obvious question how do we connect these two guys to work together because if i enable the cloner and tracer watch what happens I press play i really don't have a realistic uh, appearance this explosion should happen after this guy extinguished so that's kind of a problem but we will solve that with a tiny bit of uh, espresso so let's stop this and uh, to be able to move this complete setup you will simply put it under a null so you have the ability to move that uh, around as you want now i really hope that uh, you did not skip the lesson about time offset in the effector so it's a really really crucial not to skip lessons because some things will be really really frustrating so if i want to offset something i can do so because i have a cloner so if i load maybe a let's say a plane effector and turn off all the values i'll now have the ability to offset the keyframed animation anywhere under a cloner and this explosion fx has the animated 
value. So let's give it a try. Let's maybe offset it by let's say 20 frames and see what happens. And you can see it really works. You can try maybe 60 frames and uh, it will really do so. The animation will be shifted to 60 frames. I hope that makes sense. Let's leave it at 20 because this uh, emitter has the stop emission at 20. So at 20, this rocket will stop emitting those little guys and the explosion will happen. So how do we connect these two guys so they work seamlessly? Well, the answer is with a tiny bit of espresso. Now let's fire up that uh, espresso and this now would be a really good uh, placeholder for it. So let's uh, select espresso here and uh, just reposition this a little bit because uh, we are low on real estate. And um, basically what I'm trying to achieve here is uh, follow this uh, emitter right on the top because I really want to be able to see the values I'm extracting. And uh, unfortunately I will have to pull this pretty much all the way like this. And uh, I want to access this stop emission, which is exactly the same as this guy. And uh, I want to load the plane effector parameter other time offset. So now once you saw what uh, parameters I was uh, loading, we can scale this down and uh, pull these guys down like this. And um, here under view, let me go center nodes and they will be positioned uh, really in the visible area of Expresso. So let me just uh, scale this guy a little bit. Let me show you the general idea. If I connect these two guys, which are both uh, time values, so you can see right here, or if you hover long enough, it will tell you what uh, kind of the port is it. So we can connect them without a problem. and one will control the other and uh, that means whatever we set here will be also set here as a time offset for our plane effector effectively that means that uh, we are simply controlling the duration of uh, exhaust and explosion combined so let's try let's first try with the default value at maybe now with 50 so like this, but uh, there is also one problem with this. And the problem is I want to have a certain delay. So the rocket will emit particles and uh, between the stopping of the emission of those particles and explosion, I want to have a certain delay. So I can do that with a slight addition to this espresso. So let me add a node for that. So I will go to calculate and uh, the screen is cut off, but I'm selecting a math node. In this case, I will change the data type to time because I'm working with time. Hope that makes sense. And uh, I'll connect this stop emission as input one and we'll simply add some frame value to the output. That means it will shift the behavior by this amount of frames. So if I enter maybe 20 here, press play, the particles will go and then the delay will happen of 20 frames. So let's try maybe 40. It will accentuate the effect. You see nothing happens less 40 frames pass. And uh, this is a little bit limiting also because uh, we have to decide on the value manually and I really want to avoid it. We should rather establish a certain multiplication. So let's go to real type of data and uh, set this to multiply and uh, we'll multiply that by two. So we have really a solid result. I think this is really good. Let's try maybe with three and see what happens. This is even 
better. So how about this? So regardless of uh, which value is set here, let's maybe try 30. It will still work as expected and uh, there is no explosion because we ran out of time. So if you set this to maybe, let's say 300 and uh, this value also and do a right click, expand to full time, hit play, you will see that delay is really long, but it happens. So we have a bulletproof setup. Of course, you can clone this, move around, uh, add effectors and stuff like that. So this is really, really great. I hope you enjoyed this one and uh, let's go to our next project.